Je možná, když si zůstala recording na počátku. Yeah, I... Okay. Okay, perfect. So, should we start? Yeah, so it's already 11.31. We are hoping that other students will join because it's... People kind of tend to be late in those <laughs> mentality, but just want to welcome you. Uh, thank you very much for taking time to talk about GRE today. Um, pretty here from Education USA, um, if you people don't know us, if, especially if people are going to be watching the recording. My name is Alexandra, I'm an advisor from Sarajevo, and this is Mirola. Uh, she's an advisor from Tuzla, and two of us actually kind of specialize in graduate admissions. So whoever has any questions that we've got about uh, get, getting to master's or PhD programs, just let us know. Uh, our email addresses are Sarajevo or Tuzla at educationusa.org. And today we are talking about GRE, one of the big requirements for um, uh, graduate programs, um, something that is more or less inevitable <laughs> if you want to apply to good graduate school, if you want to get some financial aid and so on. And Yasmin here is, is, is our expert and she'll be talking about it today. And thank you so much for coming today. Alexandra, thank you very much for this lovely introduction. Uh, I'm really honored to be here because for the first time we are working in cooperation. I'm very excited about it. And I hope, dear participants, you will find this presentation useful. And in the future, if you have any questions, of course, we have Education USA advisors in Bosnia, in Sarajevo, and some in some other cities as well. And I'm also here. Um, you can definitely reach out to me. I will provide you um, with my email address uh, on one of my slides as well. All right, welcome everybody. So I will be sharing my screen with you and I will kick off my presentation. All right, so my name is Yasemin Arshan. I work as Academic Relations and ELT, English Language Teaching Coordinator in Istanbul office of ETS Global. I'm here today to deliver this presentation on the GRE general test. Uh, we will be talking about where the scores are accepted and what is the content of the test, what are the resources to prepare for the test, and what kind of uh, tools uh, can you get from ETS, and uh, what is the registration um, page, and some other details. So we will be looking at uh, a lot of details today, and I hope I will be answering, your, uh, answering all the questions in your mind. All right. So let's start uh, with, oh, sorry. Uh, we will start with the overview of the GRE general test. If you're considering graduate, business, or law school, the GRE general test uh, will open many doors for you because the GRE general test is used around the world for master's programs, specialized master's in business programs, Certificate in Law programs, MBA programs, JD programs, doctoral programs, and also for some fellowships, awarding fellowships. So when you have taken the GRE, a general test, your scores will be valid for five years. That means uh, if you're gonna have a master's, if you're gonna enroll in a master's program, and if you would like to continue with a PhD program later on, so you can use your scores for another institution, for another university, which is actually good for you. Um, as ETS is a, a prestigious testing and assessment organization um, recognized and acknowledged around the world, uh, GRE general test scores are also trusted and accepted at top business schools worldwide. Most schools are following Harvard Business School's leading weighting GRE scores equally with other business school admission tests. So it's a prestigious test and when you uh, include the general test um, score in your package, in your application package, it is something very good uh, because you will show that you have high analytical skills. Um, at the same time, a growing number of law schools are now accepting jury scores. This was not the case a few years ago, 
but right now nearly 70 law schools are now accepting uh, or are considering accepting GRE general test scores. This will save applicants time and money from um, uh, taking another admissions test. For example, law schools at the University of Arizona, Harvard University, uh, and Northwestern University and George, Georgetown University are among the first uh, accepting the general uh, GRE general test scores. You can find out all the schools accepting the general, general uh, GRE general test scores on our website. So I will share this presentation with Education USA advisors here. So don't worry if you miss anything and uh, if you have a question in your mind and if you don't want to ask it at the moment, don't worry, you will have this presentation anyway. And probably we are live on Facebook, so you can uh, re-watch the um, recording uh, anytime later. All right, so GRE general test is administered in test centers worldwide. And at the same time, it is now available uh, to take at home. We will be talking about these details. In most regions of the world, the test is available throughout the year. Uh, the test is delivered at certified test centers on a desktop, uh, desktop computer with a full screen, uh, monitor, mouse, and keyboard. So the test is normally available at more than 1,000 test centers in more than 160 countries. So you can check our test centers. I believe in Bosnia there are, I mean, GRE is not like the TOEFL IBT test. For the TOEFL IBT test, we have way more test centers across the world. But for GRE, of course, there are fever test centers, but you can take it at home. So it is also uh, in your convenience. So let's come to uh, the at-home version of the GRE general test. It is available worldwide except in mainland China and Iran. It is identical in content, format, on-screen experience, testing experience. So there is nothing different when it comes to the format and content and the testing experience. Same test fee, same payment options. Uh, scoring is also the same, the um, uh, points the, uh, that you will get from the test and score reporting options are also the same. Uh, there are extra breaks and if there are um, candidates who need support uh, due to their health related needs. There are also accommodations available. The only difference, you will take the test at home in your privacy and there will be a human proctor watching you and also monitoring you. And if you need any technical support or if you have any questions during the test, you will be able to chat with the human proctor. And ETS is working in cooperation with Proctor U for the at-home version. Um, so when you have registered for the at-home version, you will see uh, that uh, the web page will direct you to Proctor U website. So everything is very clear and straightforward. You can even test your laptop, your Wi-Fi connection, and the system uh, will show that uh, your Wi-Fi is not very strong. Maybe you should add this software option, etc. So you can, before taking the test, even before registering for the at-home version, you can check your software so that you can make sure that everything will go smoothly during the test administration. All right, so everything, all the technical details are written on our website. And let's look at the system requirements so that you can have an overall idea about the at-home version. There are computer requirements, micro, uh, microphone and speaker requirements, and also camera requirements. So when you have, when you meet all the requirements, that means your test experience will go smoothly. All right. Um, this is an important slide if you are not familiar with the content of the test. The general, the GRE general test has three sections. Analytical writing, verbal reasoning, 
and quantitative reasoning. Writing, as you can understand from the title of the section, you will write two essays. Verbal reasoning refers to reading comprehension and also knowledge of vocabulary and also guessing the meaning from the context. This uh, skill is also important for the TOEFL IBT test and also GRE general test. Quantitative reasoning refers to basically maths, skills, um, uh, your sk skills in maths. So for writing, uh, you will have two tasks in total and 60 minutes in total. For verbal reasoning, you will have two sections, 20 questions for one section and uh, 30 minutes for one section. In the quantitative reasoning section, you will have two parts, 20 questions per section and 35 minutes for one section. This is something important, but at the same time, you don't have to do anything for this piece of information. The test also includes an unsupported section, or as we call it, a research section that does not count toward your scores. You will not be aware, um, um, maybe, I mean, you were not aware of this information, maybe, uh, but it's good to know. If you get an unscored section, you will not know which one it is, so try that it, uh, this is our recommendation. So try your best in all of the sections. If you get a research section, it will always be last and will be clearly marked. So if you have an unsupport section, you will not know it, but if you have a research section, you will be aware of it. Um, ETS is a research-based organization and this practice is very common in our tests and it is something uh, research related. So a lot of testing and assessment organizations do it. ETS is not the only organization. This is something uh, really about research. Okay, let's look at the sections uh, in more depth. Um, analytical writing section has two parts. Analyze an issue, analyze an argument. In the part, analyze an issue, it will require to analyze an issue and develop an argument with reasons and or examples to support your position. I will show you an example at the very end of my presentation so you will have a better understanding. And also we have three resources on our website which are accessible and available to everyone. So what I will say will stay in theory maybe, but when you look at the free resources, you will have a better understanding of the question types, task types. Analyze an argument will require to assess the logical soundness of a given argument according to the specific task directions. And as you can probably understand, as you will be in front of the computer, you will be typing your essays. So you will use the keyboard. Some of the test takers I realized during the audits, they would like to take notes on sheets of paper provided by the test center administrators. This is also possible at, at home version. Uh, you can take some notes, maybe you can write some of the arguments like in keywords on the sheets of paper, but no one from ETS will see uh, your scrap paper. That is why what you have typed by using the keyboard is important. All right, so you can definitely take notes while uh, maybe before starting writing your essays. Um, on the screen, you will see that there are some basic, basic functions that you can benefit from. Insert text, delete text, cut and paste, undo the previous action. So these are, uh, these are uh, present in, on the screen uh, during the test administration. In, ver in the verbal reasoning section, um, this is, I can tell you even from my own experience, verbal reasoning section is a bit challenging section because of the vocabulary level. Um, because you can, think that 
for example, TOEFL IBT test is designed for non-native speakers of English, but for GRE, it is more, uh, it is broader. So even native speakers take this test. That is why the verbal reasoning and um, at the same time, GRE general test uh, tests higher cognitive skills, higher analytical skills. That is why this section might be a little bit challenging. That is why vocabulary study might be needed. And also, I will recommend you, recommend you uh, reading some uh, articles, newspaper articles from uh, prestigious resources. And we have also free resources on our website. So try to expose yourself to various texts with high level of vocabulary. So this section will assess your ability to understand what you read and how you apply your reasoning skills. So it is beyond vocabulary. Question types will include reading comprehension, text completion, and sentence equivalence. In the following slides, I will give you, uh, I will show you a sample. So there might be multiple choice questions or select in passage questions. When you see the question types, uh, samples, you will get to understand better probably. Okay, quantitative reasoning section, how it works, because it uh, involves calculation. There will be an on-screen calculator available. You can carry it on any uh, part of the screen, so it is easily used. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, in this section, your ability to interpret and analyze quantitative information and solve problems using mathematical models will be assessed. Question types include quantitative comparison, multiple choice question, select one answer or one or more answer choices, which are more challenging. Uh, it um, assesses higher analytical skills and there will be questions with numeric entry. You will do your calculation and you will enter the number. All right, for example, there will be a percentage. Now, uh, in this section, we will assess your basic mathematical skills and elementary mathematical concepts, such as arithmetic, arithmetic algebra, geometry, and data analysis. Okay, how does the screen look like during the uh, quantitative reasoning section? As you can see here, you will enter a number after you have done your calculation. Uh, there is an on-screen calculator which you can carry, move freely within a section. There is exit section. I hope you will not do it before making your calculation. There is calculator, mark, review, so easily navigatable as you can see, help, back and next. So the screen, is very clear and very straightforward, so you, it will not be confusing you during the test administration. And when you have completed the free resources, you will have a much better understanding of the tech, uh, test. Let's come to the registration tips. Registration is important because uh, it is the first step to your success in the test. We have a special link for um, GRE registration, www.ets.org slash mygre. You will open a personal GRE account. It will take around 20 minutes and uh, opening, uh, opening account is free. When you have decided to take the test, you will choose your date, your time, and then you will pay the test fee and your registration will be confirmed by ETS and you will receive an email and at the same time it will appear on your account as an order. It will be confirmed through email and also on your GRE account. So in your to uh, GRE account uh, you can also choose the at-home version or test center version so it will depend on your own choice. So you will use your ETS GRE account to register and view your official scores online when they're available. 
this account is very important. You must enter your name, surname in the correct way. Sometimes, for example, in Turkey, people have two names, two uh, first names. Um, and sometimes they don't enter the second one, which is not recommended at all because your name and surname must match with your official name and surname on your ID, on your passport. Be careful with that. Probably in Bosnian language as well, you have non-English characters or non-English symbols, like in Turkish, for example, we have Şu. So our uh, TOEFL and GRE accounts do not accept non-English symbols, non-English characters. So it's not a problem when you go to the test center, don't worry about it. Just write your name and surname in English characters, but don't forget to enter it fully. Uh, you can go to the test center with your ID, with a signature or with a passport. So ID requirements are on our website. So make sure that your ID requirements, um, the ID requirements in your country meet uh, the, uh, like in, in line with your ID and passport. All right, please make sure that you check it in advance. And what else? If you have a serious health-related need, I hope you don't have. So you can definitely reach out to GRE Accommodation Services and they will provide the best support for you so that you can take the test without any problems. So when you have opened your GRE account on our website, then uh, the website will um, direct you to this page. Uh, you can see the screenshot here. Register, find test centers and dates. This is the screenshot, how it looks like. Your name and surname, ID, username, and you can also view orders, uh, sending additional score reports, GRE diagnostic service, I will be talking about it in a few minutes, test preparation tools, you can manage everything in your account. So uh, make sure that you enter every piece of information correctly and you can follow everything without any complications. So when you, um, when you would like to uh, register for the test, you will log in in your account, log in in your account and you will select register. Go on the Find Test Centers and Dates page, select Test at Home, depending on your choice. You will verify your email address and then continue. You will confirm your time zone, then you will choose a test and da uh, date and time. You will confirm appointment details, continue will, uh, uh, with your registration and pay for the test. And as the last recommendation, keep this email safe because it contains the link to start your test on test day. So these are the recommendations for the at-home version. And make sure that uh, you also check uh, your spam box. Uh, sometimes it happens in some of the countries. So make sure that you have this link with all the instructions to uh, take the test at home. Okay, let's come to some tips and strategies which will be useful for your preparation. Of course, some of the recommendations are actually um, uh, valid for all of the tests in the world. For example, the first one, become familiar with question formats and directions beforehand. You should be fully familiar with the test, uh, test tasks and types, uh, question types, format, everything, so that when you have the test in front of you, you will not be surprised at all. Be aware of time, even when you do the practice, uh, be aware of time and uh, try to answer the questions under timed conditions, because there will be specific uh, time given you, given to you during the test. That is why be aware of time. Make sure you understand each of the questions carefully. Read each question 
in depth, like thoroughly, and read all answer choices before answering. Sometimes when we look at the question very quickly, ah, I know it, so this is a topic I'm familiar with. I will answer this correctly. Don't uh, have a quick judgment. Read everything carefully. And also answer all of the questions. Make your best uh, guess. So don't leave any questions empty. This is very important. And also use your knowledge to answer the questions even they, if they are unfamiliar to you. And uh, let's continue with the tips and strategies. Don't waste your time on the challenging questions, on the questions that you find challenging, because all the questions have the same weight. No question carries greater weight than any other. Do not spend too much time on the review screen. Review screen is just for the questions that you are not sure about. So it just will take away from the time you have to spend on the questions themselves. And as the last recommendation, check the review screen before finishing a section so that you will make sure uh, you have answered all of the questions. Okay, so this is another significant detail element of uh, uh, taking the test, getting and sending your scores to the institutions. I will give you um, a tip here. With the corona period, a lot of institutions, instead of accepting the paper copy of your GRE general test score report, they accept electronic copies because everything has been digitalized. We are almost um, doing everything virtually. That is why they would like to receive electronic copies. It depends on the institutions. Institutions in uh, working in cooperation with ETS, they use a kind of data manager uh, so that they can uh, have access to the scores of the candidates. And this is also the most reliable methods in the world. Uh, that is why you will need to send your scores to the institutions that you would like to apply. What is the procedure? Let's explore it all together. First of all, let's look at the scoring. Scoring scales are on this slide. For analytical writing, you will get half point uh, increments between zero and six. 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, it goes on like this. For verbal reasoning, scoring is between 130 and 170. You will receive your scores in one point increments. For quantitative reasoning, the scoring is between 130 and 170, just like verbal reasoning, and you will receive your scores in one point increments. And I really like this uh, feature, by the way, and we have it for the TOEFL IBT reading and listening sections as well. At the very end of the test administration, you will see your official scores for verbal reasoning and quantitative reasoning. For analytical writing, it needs human scoring. It requires human scoring. That is why you cannot receive your unofficial scores for writing. But for the other two sections, you will learn about your scores. This, is, um, this definitely reduces uh, the stress of the test takers. I really, really like it. So at the end of the test administration, you will see your unofficial scores. Why do we call them unofficial? Does that mean that my scores will change after 10 days? No. Uh, as the scores uh, for the score for analytical writing is not ready yet, your test score as a, a whole test score is not ready completely. That is why we call it unofficial. All right, so your scores will not change for verbal reasoning and quantitative reasoning. You will just have to wait your uh, total score, uh, including analytical writing. Okay, so 
let's come to the sending, uh, the, let's come to the issue of sending your scores to the institutions. Let's suppose that there are three universities in your mind and you, will, you, will, uh, you plan to apply uh, for these universities and you can send your score report electronically and also by post. It depends on the requirement of the university. After viewing your unofficial verbal reasoning and quantitative reasoning scores, you will be asked to designate up to four score recipients you want to receive your official GRE general test scores. Because at the end of the test, you will see, okay, I performed very well and I can apply uh, to Stanford University, for example. So you can just make this decision I mean, if the university is in your mind, uh, you can send uh, the score report directly at the very end of the test. These score reports are part of your test fee. You can decide to use your four free score reports at the end of your test or decide not to send any scores at any time. You don't have to send your scores at the very end of the test. You can take this decision later, no problem. After you exit the test administration and after test day, you can send additional score reports for a fee. There will be a service fee to be applied by ETS in your account. If I'm not wrong, $20 for one institution. So it's been a long time, I didn't check it. Sorry for that. All right. But at the end of the test administration, it is free up to four institutions. Let's come to your official GRE scores, which is the exciting period, maybe stressful at the same time, depending on your scores. I hope all of you will receive a very high score and with confidence you will apply uh, to the universities in the US. Your GRE official scores are reported in about 10 to 15 days after test date. So you cannot have and express scoring, sometimes test takers ask about it because they uh, register for the test at the la very last minute. You cannot um, exhilarate this process. There is no way for that. So you will receive your official scores in around 10 to 15 days. So arrange your application process according to this period. All right, score announcement period. Your scores will be available for you to view online in your ETS account, as I told you before. Your score report includes all scores in your reportable history. Um, we are talking about the past five years. You can print a personal copy of your score report. The PDF uh, version will be available in your account. At the background of the score report, it will be written test taker copy. So institutions will understand it that you download it from your ETS account. But when you receive uh, your original score report from ETS by post, it will say that it is the original copy. All right, so there will be two copies. Keep the PDF version as well. Sometimes universities may ask for the electronic copy, but at the same time, they say that please send the uh, GRE or TOEFL IBT score report as well. So it depends on the uh, universities and all these requirements are already written on their website. And of course you can all, um, always reach out to the admissions officers of universities and also Education USA advisors here can also help you about that. I'm sure that they have way more experience than I do about this application process. So your scores are reported to the institutions as well uh, when you have designated uh, on or after test day. Your analytical writing essay responses are also available to institutions to review. Uh, because master's programs and PhD programs, yeah, they they're higher at higher uh, high stake uh, decisions. They require high stake decisions. That is why institutions may check a lot of details. So get ready for that. And probably you will even uh, not, uh, not be aware of it anyway. 
So taking the test and having the highest score, uh, uh, as the highest score as possible, is uh, should be your aim. The other details are just uh, that you should be aware, but you don't have to do anything. So I hope you will take the test only once. I believe you can you can do it. Uh, if you want to take the test again, you can. This is possible because this question is asked to us. We don't want you to take the test five times and you will have a lot of stress for sure. So you can take the test the second time after uh, 21 days. So this is possible, dear friends. There is this GRE diagnostic service. I also like it a lot because you can see what you have, how you performed uh, during the test. And GRE Diagnostic Service is also available to institutions if you choose them as the score recipient institution, by the way. So you can see right, wrong, difficulty level, how much time you spend. I really like this report, by the way, because you can see how well you performed uh, during the test. I'm sure you are curious about all these resources, uh, tools to help you prepare for the test. We have free resources and also paid resources. If I were you, first of all, I, um, I would be familiar all with all the question types, on-screen experience, how does the calculator work? So make sure that you are familiar with that, with the format of the test and the screen experience, and then if you need more resources, purchase them in your GRE account. So first, finish all the uh, free resources, maybe repeat some of them, maybe retake the sample test, and then you will maybe need uh, uh, paid resources uh, in order to get a higher score. It totally depends on your choice and your performance. For example, this Power Prep Test Preview Tool, this is a free resource and contains information to help familiarize uh, test takers with the question types, test features, and help tools that are available during the actual GRE general test. This free tool can be found in the My Test Preparation and Services section of a test taker's ETS account. Do you remember I showed you an SS screenshot and it, was, it is already there. You will uh, view it in your uh, GRE account. ETS.org GRE Prepare so you can find it on our uh, web link as well. So, uh, so we have free power prep online two free Power Prep online practice tests can be accessed in your ETS account. So you will be able to test yourself. Maybe you can take it uh, at the very beginning of your study and then you will take it after three months, for example. Or if you have one year in front of you, you can retake them uh, so that you can make sure that you're totally ready for the test. The practice tests are as as close to the actual computer delivery test as you can get. They are designed to help you to understand what is being tested, in what ways I'm testing, I'm being tested, gain familiarity with the various question types and the functionality of the test, Be becoming familiar with the testing tools, including the on-screen calculator. So practicing the test, taking the test, under timed conditions or untimed conditions, because for the essay, I told you there are two essays, 30 minutes plus 30 minutes. So you have to finish writing an essay and also you should have time to review, to go over what you have written. Maybe you will spot your mistakes. Maybe we will change one word, one sentence. So you should have time to review your responses as well. Istanbul is very hot. Even, uh, even though I have the ventilator, I'm sweating. So, and also uh, you, in this tool, you will be able to see um, the scoring um, guides according to what criteria we are uh, checking your responses, your essays. So you should be aware also about, of the criteria on which we check uh, your responses, your essays. So every 
um, all these tools are also available on our website and also in your account. So this GRE search service can be useful. Um, I would like to talk about it as well. We have time, I guess. I see that uh, I'm doing okay in terms of timing for my presentation. You can list a free profile about yourself to help graduate business and law schools, fellowship granting organizations, and other organizations that participate in the search service to find you. They can even send you some extra uh, information about their programs uh, if they if they think that if you match their recruitment profile you can sign up when you register for a GRE test or you can register for the service in your ETS account at any time this is optional this is something new actually I'm also not very familiar with that but this is what I've heard from my colleagues at ETS headquarters in Princeton. They said it's a very nice free ETS tool to help you to find graduate level programs that match your goals, access planning tools, uh, and also directly communicate with program staff, admissions officers who can mentor you through the application process. So, um, of course, uh, Education USA advisors provide uh, sometimes face-to-face -face virtual guidance. They're always helpful. I'm working with them uh, perfectly across the world. So, of course, this can be also a good option for you if you would like to uh, have more tools to get informed about the programs of different universities in the U.S. So, uh, if you would like to follow us on our social media channels, if you would like to uh, make yourself updated, keep yourself updated, you can uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, also, we have videos on YouTube. I'm sure that those videos will inspire you and uh, they will also provide some tips and strategies for a better preparation for the GRE general test. And there are also some uh, some other channels that I never use, but in some of the parts of the world, they are, fam uh, they are famous, like uh, Sina Vibo, WeChat, Zio, so you can um, reach, uh, reach out to us uh, actually on some other different social media channels. And if you would like to get more information about the test and or if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I will do my best to support you in this process and also Education USA advisors in Bosnia, they are very experienced about this sort of uh, processes. So uh, we are here to help you. And as the final uh, parts of my presentation, I would like to show you sample questions from uh, three sections of the GRE general test. For example, analytical writing, analyze and issue task. As you can see, the screen is very clear, understandable. You will not have difficulty to manage the page, manage the screen, everything is very clear. Section one of three, what is the question? As, pro as people rely more and more on technology to solve problems, the ability of humans to think for themselves will surely deteriorate. What a statement, right? So it says, what, write a response in which you discuss blah blah. So I will not continue reading this question. You will have this presentation anyway. And there are also sample questions that you can uh, have access to free of charge. As you can see, there is the timer on the top of the screen on the right side. Cut, paste, undo, redo. You can also hide time, which I don't recommend. You should be aware of the time. Help, next. So this is how the screen looks like. Let's come to the analyze and argument task. This time there's a situation given, and then there is the prompt, essay prompt. Uh, there is a Mason city, um, there is an issue about the river, I guess, and residents would like to find a solution for a problem because they uh, there is a problem with the quality of the river's water, etc. So there is a situation given here. And it says, write a response in which you examine the stated 
and or unstated assumptions of the argument and it goes on like that. You should read the uh, situation very carefully word by word and try to understand it and then immediately start writing. Maybe you can take notes, some of the arguments that you would like to discuss on a uh, scrap paper and then you can start writing, uh, typing on the keyboard. So you will decide on that. This is a verbal reasoning question. There is a short paragraph and there are three blanks. You have to fill, uh, fill in those blanks with one word. You will choose one option from each of them. Uh, of course, the answers are not given during the test. I would like to show you the answer here. Um, and when you um, place the words into the blanks, reread the paragraph. Because when you put the words, they should make, I mean, the paragraph should make sense. This is very important. This is a quantitative reasoning question. Uh, there is a situation problem given here. You will make your calculation by using the calculator and you will choose one answer choice. The answer is not given during the real test. Oops, I think I did it by mistake <laughs> because it was the end of my presentation. Okay, sorry, I did it abruptly. Um, so you can find more sample questions on our website in your GRE account when you have opened it. If you have any questions, I can get your questions at the moment. So I'm finalizing my presentation here and we'll stop sharing my screen. Yes, please. Any questions or comments? I hope everything is clear so far. Almost everything, let's say. <laughs> you can write in the chat or you can unmute yourself. We are not a big group. So we would like to hear your voice as well. Uh, we have a question. Uh, something that what we usually receive from students is, I, I, and I know it's extremely difficult to answer. Okay, <laughs> please let me know. How, I will do my how best. Much, how much preparation is necessary for GRE? I mean, how yeah. long people should practice studying that kind of stuff? So this is a question I frequently receive. Yeah. I always tell the students, I don't know you because yeah. I meet them virtually or in the past before the corona period, we used to meet at international education fairs. So. If you if you see one student, I don't think that GRE will be a big challenge for you, uh, because at least English wise you are ready. But mm -hmm. what about your analytical skills? We are talking about writing, verbal reasoning, quantitative mm -hmm. reasoning. So if you believe that, um, I mean, let's suppose that we are talking about an engineering student. Uh, probably the universities will take into consideration more their quantitative reasoning score. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, verbal reasoning, of course, they have to do it. They have to complete all of the sections of the GRE general test, but their quantitative reasoning will be more important because they are an engineering student or an MBA student. Uh, so that is why I believe if they have good mathematical skills, which cannot, uh, which we cannot measure with uh, CFR level like C1, B1, so we cannot use these terms for maths. So that is why I believe three months of like a regular basis uh, st study and a regular basis will be sufficient, I believe. Mm -hmm. But we are talking about a lot of elements. It's not TOEFL IBT. For TOEFL IBT, oh, I'm a good B2. I'm a C1. Okay. I think three months, two months, um, a discipline study will be sufficient. But for GRE, I don't know your maths. So yeah. I don't know your uh, reading comprehension skills. And it is also a little bit beyond comprehension. We are talking about analytical skills, etc. So this is indeed a difficult question. But if I know the student, of course, I can make a better guess and uh, recommend uh, a better um, plan for them. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, so sometimes we, I receive the same question for the TOEFL of IBT and it's like, I, my, my answer is usually like, so how do you think, you know, it would take me for C1 Spanish course? And they're like, yeah, they don't know even what is C1, maybe upper intermediate, I don't know. Like this intermediate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For this... TOEFL IBT, um, I mean, GRE as well, we have the free uh, tests available on our website. They should open this free test and they should check the questions. Some of the students who have lower level, they will be shocked. Oh, this is too much for my level. They will understand. I always tell students, just check the free practice test and you will get to understand your level. <laughs> are you way beyond uh, this level or are you lower than this level? You will understand. Then if your level, English level is low for the TOEFL IBT, first study academic English and then jump into TOEFL IBT test preparation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, any other questions or comments? Uh, Please. What about our students? Uh, feel free to ask questions. Yes. There's nothing in the chat. Nobody? All clear? All clear? Wow. <laughs> oh, Sara. Sara. Um, thank you first for your for this presentation. It was very You're informative. Welcome. Um, I would like to ask uh, regarding the uh, application towards um, the U.S. institutions. Um, mm -hmm. If I do, if I have a good GPA, and I do uh, GRE like below average or average, and I still want to get into into a good university, um, should I apply? Uh, I mean. Uh, are the are the international students uh, differently evaluated than uh, American or actually this is a question probably you can answer better uh, dear education USA colleagues mm -hmm. to me uh, it's a, the application package is a whole and most of the time universities approach uh, th th this process uh, with a holistic approach, like they would like to check everything one by one. If you have a good G, uh, GPA, maybe a lower GRE score may still help you, it's fine. Maybe you can answer, dear colleagues, uh, to this question because you have been dealing with a lot of application processes so far, probably. Uh, you're completely right. The, the, the low GPA uh, or lower GPA does not really reflect good because it's a, it's a long-term study process. And GRE is just one test. Maybe you, you had a headache that day. Maybe you don't have money to take it over all over again. Maybe, you know, you were just distressed. Something happened and you didn't take that test once good. Uh, so, I mean, if even a little bit of lower G GRE, it, I mean, it doesn't reflect that badly if you have everything else really, really good. So, I mean, I definitely agree with you. Nice to have high GPA and high GRE. That's yeah. the perfect solution. But, you know. And just, maybe there are some other elements that university, that the particular university is um, looking for. Uh, a gentian letter, I don't know, maybe some social activities that you have done at university, etc. So that is why I said, like, it's a whole package. So, yeah. but at the same time, I totally agree with you. Um, maybe you have high GPA, this might really help you, and a lower GRE will, would be fine. Maybe yeah. in one section you've done really well, maybe yeah. in another section you couldn't achieve a high score. This would be fine, depending on the yeah, decisions of admissions officers. Yeah. But that, I mean, a lower GRE score doesn't mean that, no, this university will not accept you, admit you at all, no. You should definitely apply if you're dreaming about it. Exactly. Maybe you can strengthen the other elements, like a good intention letter, statement of purpose, etc. maybe something else that you can show as uh, evidence that you are a perfect match for this school, you yeah. know? Yeah. Thank you a lot. You're welcome. I wish the best of luck for you. Thank you. Mm. Any more questions? No? I don't see anything else. Okay. Well. Uh, Thank you, guys. 
It was a, it's been a pleasure for me. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you, and I hope to, I'll be in touch, we'll be in touch with you for the TOEFL sessions later on. In, in, Perfect, your, yeah. thank you very much. You. I'm looking Bye. forward to that. Bye everyone, I wish the Bye. best of luck for everyone. Bye, have a nice day. Bye.